Hey! Hey, it's Huck. And I know, I look really old, don't I? Um, look, I am very sorry that I have not posted anything in, you know, it seems like weeks now. And there's a pretty good reason for it, as you might imagine. My health hasn't been very good, and in the last month or so, it's been, well, frankly, pretty horrible. I, uh, reached kind of a low point last week where I uh, knew I was either going to have to go into the ER or I was going to have to get my butt in to see the doctor, and uh, so I finally went Thursday. And um, fortunately, he was able to see me that day. He got me in. And he told me, he said, you know, he knows that I'm in pretty bad shape when I come to the doctor. And here's the thing. You know, I believe strongly that, uh, you know, you should see your doctor. Um, you know, I'm not one of these people that, uh, you know, not. there's two things that will get me to the doctor. One, if I think I'm really going to die. And two, you know, I learned a long time ago that, uh, you know, if you're going to miss a day of work, cover your ass. Um, so, you know, that's kind of my, my basic rule. Um, the thing that makes me want to avoid going to the doctor's office or the hospital, if I can avoid it, is not because I don't think I need medical help. Um, quite the opposite. I'm pretty sure I know when I need it. It's that I am, you know, with my condition, where, you know, one of these crazy flus that are going around all the time um, can, you know, quite literally kill me. Um, I am really kind of worried that I'm going, you know, uh, that I'm just putting myself at great risk going to the doctor's office or the ER where that kind of thing is probably flying around. And, um, you know, I make no bones about it. If I can avoid, if I can get the medication I need by making a phone call or two, I'm going to try that, you know. And this time the doctor's office, uh, and usually my doctor is pretty cool about that. My doctor, by the way, um, is a dead ringer for The Rock. You know, Dwayne Johnson. I mean, he really is. You would be stunned. Oh, I'll, I'll grab a picture of him next time I see him. Um, uh, he, I mean, he's he's a little thinner. He's real athletic. Uh, you know, I mean, he doesn't weigh. You know, he's not bodybuilder, but uh, but he does. He, I mean, he's a dead ringer for the. Well, anyway, but I, I like the guy, and he uh, he knows me pretty well, and he knows, you know, he knows what I need when. Uh, uh, you know, when I have these bad... Last week, I was at a point where, you know, I mean, I think... Uh, when you have COPD as I have it, you kind of... Um, your body's constantly adjusting to um, deal with this reality. And so what would have, uh, you know, probably panicked me three or four years ago now is, you know, just routine. And so I have learned to adjust how I walk, <laughs> how I talk, um, how I move, when I move. Um, when I'm not doing well, I walk in little baby steps. There's nothing wrong with my muscles. There's nothing wrong with my balance. You know, when you see old people walk and you think, oh, for me, it's because it uses less oxygen. It's it's that simple, you know. The slower I walk, the shorter the steps I take, the less oxygen I use, and it's it's just true. Last week, um, on a good day, when I'm not, you know, flaring up, I can sit around. My oxygen level should be around 96, 97. When I'm on my oxygen, it can be around 98, 99. When I'm bad, you know, throw those out the window. Um, last week, I, my oxygen without o my oxygen level, without wearing oxygen, sitting around, was like 90 to 92. And in the minute I would get up, walk to the bathroom or whatever, I mean, I'm I'm going down to 81, 82. You know, uh, that's not a good place to be, especially if you have things to do. Um, and 
even wearing oxygen, you know, my uh, oxygen level wouldn't climb much past 94, 95. So, you know, I knew it was a concern. And frankly, I was getting just so tired. I had, I was wheezing so much. Um, I was, you know, I mean, just every, I know when I'm bad. And, uh, you know, when I have trouble laying down and breathing, when I'm having, um, you know, difficulty just sitting and breathing, you know, without being labored, I knew, you know, things were bad. So I went in there. Uh, it takes a long time to see the doctor. You know, you go in there, there's, you know, 10 people sitting in the waiting room. They call you in one at a time. So you're in the waiting room for an hour and a half or more. And then you, once you get back there, they've got six or seven rooms all filled with somebody. And by the time they get to you, you've been in there another 45 minutes or an hour. So all in all, you know, it was worth the two and a half hour investment. The doctor saw me. My oxygen level was around, um, wouldn't climb above 88 without wearing my oxygen. Um, that's where I was. So, and that's sitting there. So, now I've been on, um, <coughs> the routine usually for me, when I get bad like this, and this is about as bad as I've been, is, you know, I get a round of amoxicillin, and I get, uh, you know, like a quadruples my um, prednisone, which is kind of relaxes and, and uh, reduces the inflammation, um, you know, in my lungs. And, uh, you know, and that combination seems to have always done the trick. Truth is, I've been on amoxicillin way too frequently. Um, part of that was because I had a, you know, a tooth infection that I refused to have pulled for too long. And so... Um, I went a couple of bouts of uh, amoxicillin for that problem uh, for a couple of years, and then, and then all of this. So I've had amoxicillin like uh, prescribed at least four times, um, really in less than a year. Going back to my trip to England, I had my doctor prescribe it, um, you know, for me in case I needed it, and of course I did. Um, and since that time, I've had it three more times. I think once in January. Uh, well, once in November, once in January, and, and now here's again. So as I told him, I said, you know, it seems to me the only basic antibiotic that's still effective. Um, uh, there's uh, two other ones called uh, clindamycin, which I've had from time to time. Last couple of times I took it, it uh, swelled up my, my tongue real bad right away. So he had to take me off of that. And the other um, is, I think, um, what's it called? Um, uh, I just had it on the tip of my tongue. Um, I, well, it doesn't matter. The other one just simply doesn't work. Uh, it uh, doesn't harm me in any way. It's just uh, absolutely ineffective. Um, every time they prescribe it for me, I, I end up going in seven days, ten days later after taking, you know, most or all of it and I end up getting amoxicillin. So the problem with being on amoxicillin this many times is it's, it's kind of lost some of its effectiveness. Um, I take, used to, you know, work within two or three days and I'd feel better. And of course, I'd always take the full, you know, quantity. Um, but uh, what I found in the last two or three times I've taken it is that, uh, you know, I've had to go through practically the whole regiment before I'd feel, you know, better. And, and even then I question whether or not I ever got totally better. So uh, this time he thought it was time to, to beef that up a bit. And I know they worry about that uh, because, you know, there's only so many antibiotics out there and they try to save the stronger ones for those things that uh, your body really, uh, where other things are ineffective. And if you start, you know, running through the, um, you know, the more powerful drugs too soon, um, Nothing's going to help you when you really need one, you know. Uh, but at any rate, he felt it was time for me to get uh, something a little more uh, powerful. And uh, this one, uh, it says, uh, it's a substitute for Augmentin. 
something that's uh, printed here. It says amoxicillin clav, C-L-A-V, 875-125 milligram tablets. So I don't know. Um, all I know is it did the trick. I've been taking it now for four days, along with, uh, like I say, uh, a much heavier dosage of the prednisone for now. And um, I felt better really within 24, 48 hours. Uh, I mean, I, I'm still not completely over what I had, but I'm much, much better. Um, significantly better. So that's a good thing. Um, so at any rate, that accounts for my absence here. I'm going to do a video on my main channel later today that I haven't done a video on that channel since I posted something about my uh, trip to Europe, I think. Um, it's been, well, to England. Um, I'm going to talk about the Browns draft and, um, you know, the, I spent, uh, I, I watched every minute of the draft. Uh, when, you, when you're when you coming off a winless team, I mean, you know, one of only two winless teams in the modern NFL history, um, you know, it's, um, the draft is, um, you know, it's like the Super Bowl, baby. So, anyway, I have some pretty strong opinions on uh, the Browns um, draft and, you know, a couple of other topics uh, surrounding the Browns, like uh, the fact that they picked up this Taylor, um, Tyler Taylor quarterback uh, out of Buffalo for a third-round draft pick uh, prior to the draft. And uh, uh, those of you who uh, watch this channel, even though you may not be um, into sports at all, it, maybe you are, maybe you're not, um, You'll probably like my take on the, the Tyrod Taylor deal. Um, I think one of the steals for the Browns this offseason was getting him from Buffalo. Um, now the question is going to be whether or not they give him an honest, um, you know, honest support at the position. But uh, if they do, uh, don't get me wrong, I am really big on, I think they picked the right quarterback myself. Uh, I, um, you know, I mean, there are issues I have with uh, Baker Mayfield on some of the, you know, some of the stunts that he's pulled, maybe. But, but as far as getting the quarterback that uh, has the most experience, um, is uh, had the most success, um, that seems to um, be able to rally his team, um, you know, in almost every category, uh, Baker Mayfield was a better quarterback among, you know, the top four or five that uh, everybody was talking about. So I have no qualms about that. But the truth is, I would not sell, I would not sell uh, Tyler Taylor, Tyrod Taylor short. I thought, um, you know, the Buffalo Bills, um, he's the second best Buffalo Bills quarterback, you know, um, well, He's certainly the the best quarterback they've had since um, since they uh, you know their great hero quarterback uh, Jim. Um, why can't I remember his name? Well, at any rate, uh, I think Tyrod Taylor could be um, surprisingly effective with the Browns. He's um, he doesn't commit turnovers. He is a very good runner um, who is dangerous, you know, running with the ball out of the pocket, uh, you know. Um, uh, but, you know, he can be very effective if you give him offensive weapons. Um, again, I'm going to talk a little bit about this on that other video, but um, the reasons why I think Buffalo got rid of him and, and how they kind of treated him, I think are issues that maybe uh, those of you who watch this channel might be interested to hear my views on. Um, maybe not. At any rate, uh, again, I am um, trying to get myself a little bit stronger now that I've um, kind of taken care of the most immediate need. I am busy trying to work out getting uh, my financial situation a little bit better. Um, as you know, that trip to England cost me through the nose and um, turned out um, 
still haven't paid off all those bills. And part of that is because I spent way more than I had planned. Part of it was because, um, you know, other things have come up. I've had to, well, just this month, I've had another $118 to put into the car. Um, and that's just last week. Um, I've had uh, other things come up. My house payment is $42 more this year. My um, gas bill went up. My utility bills have gone way much higher uh, than um, than I remember them being, you know, um, on average. My utilities are, you know, it comes in one city bill basically, but it's it's, uh, it's water, sewage, and electric. And uh, boy, you know, you don't do anything different, and then all of a sudden, one month of your bill is like twice what it normally is. So um, there's two other things that I put some money on that I um, really debated doing. One is, you know, I put some money into my computer so that I could get my computer uh, working again to make videos. And that cost me a little bit of money. Uh, the other thing that I put some money into was I finally got my camera fixed. And this is my good camera. This is my um, Sony HFS 100. Now, I used to use an HV20, but uh, the problem with that camera, as good quality as that camera is, and it really was great quality video, um, it just wasn't compatible with my computer, no matter what I tried. It, you have to upload the, the video in real time and, and uh, through a firewire, and even though it has a firewire port, it just wasn't accepting that camera no matter what I've tried. And um, so I ended up um, selling that and using the money for that to, um, well, towards buying this HFS 100, which is considered a slightly more modern camera, I guess. Uh, I think we make an HV20 a long time ago, um, even though it was a more expensive camera when it was made. Um, I think I... I don't know what I paid for this HVS 100. I think it was a little over $200 when I bought it, which I, I think was a steal. Um, but still, it's, you know, it's not money I have. Um, and anyway, it broke on my trip to England. It, it fell off the dashboard as I was driving and hit the floor, and it broke some kind of uh, something or another inside. And uh, it has taken me, you know, until just recently here to finally send it in and get it repaired. There's a place in California that specializes in these kind of things. And, it, you know, the trouble is, you know, they always uh, get you by saying, oh, you know, this will cost you a hundred bucks. And you say, okay, well, you know, I'll, I'll do that. And then you send it in and it's like more than double that or whatever. So it ended up costing me, I think, $218 or something. Again, money I don't have. Uh, I would much rather be spending that money and, and paying trying to pay off. Here's the thing. I had credit card bills before I went to England. And I knew I was going to put more money on my credit cards. And I, I debated and I thought, you know, this is a once in a lifetime deal. I, I'm going to just do it. Um, and um, But I thought I was, you know, going to be on a certain budget and, and things, you know, happened the way they did. And I ended up um, spending more money, unfortunately, than I wanted to. And you know, and some other things happened there. And, um, and so I come back here and like all my credit cards were completely maxed out. And I was just like, oh my God, you know, I'm getting all this help. And if that help ever ended, I would be, you know, <laughs> without the help I get, I can't pay my bills, let alone, and I'm talking about my monthly utility bills, house payment, you know, car insurance, the things that I absolutely have. I mean, frankly, without help, I wouldn't have TV let alone being able to pay credit card bills. So so I have worked diligently at trying to pay down the credit card bills. And uh, and I'm getting there. You know, I'm really getting there. Um, but <clears throat> it has taken me a lot of time because other things come up. And so all I'm saying is, you know, things like getting the camera fixed and, you know, getting the computer working again are kind of... Um, you know, I hate to say it, but they're luxuries. And, you know, I don't know that I can justify luxuries. Um, so, 
at any rate, I finally did it. So this is hopefully the last can last video uh, I'll have to film, um, you know, using my smartphone. Um, we'll see. Uh, I don't know. I actually haven't uh, taken the camera out of the box yet. Uh, it's just been returned, so we'll see. <laughs> Hopefully everything's working. Um, but the HV was, HVS100 is a pretty good camera um, itself. And unlike the HV20, you it uses a, one of those SD cards. And uh, so uploading it to the computer is, you know, Lightning quick, simple videos right there to work with. And I'm really anxious to, you know, get back into the video editing. Um, who knows? You may even see Clone again. Um, I know um, that's really for my other channel. So I just wanted to kind of give you this update. I'm feeling a lot better. I plan on um, contacting my doctor to give me a referral now. I want to start going to... Um, rehab um, the uh, pulmonary rehab really helps me uh, just physically doing more and um, you know getting fewer cramps in the neck and stuff from sitting around too much and uh, you know I, now that uh, starting to warm up finally I'm hopeful I'll be able to get outdoors and do a little bit more um, it'd be much healthier for me to get up and around and, uh, you know, I know you can do exercises at home, but they're, um, frankly, uh, I can use the motivation. Uh, they do some things I don't have all of these resources at home to do. Um, and, uh, you know, and I trust their judgment. They're the professionals. So, uh, you know, and they have things like stretch bands and things that I don't have to um help me with and um so I'm um I'm hoping that I'm going to be able to um still do something this summer. Last summer of course was the big trip. The trip of a lifetime that I you know, I mean I'm so glad I went even though I didn't see. I um there was really one day I got out of the car um to do much. Um that was the day I went to, uh, you know, see uh, Shakespeare's Church and um, later a pub that night. And, uh, and I think uh, the next day, uh, after I went to London and found that I couldn't get out of the car, um, you know, I ended up coming back to Oxford and uh, at least went into, um, you know, a pub I really wanted to visit the um, Eagle and the Child, and, and so uh, those were the two highlights outside of the car uh, on that whole six-day trip. Um, I saw a lot of things from the car, and yet, as disappointing as that may sound, it was an experience I will always treasure. You know, just the knowledge that I've been there, that I saw things with my own eyes, and, and really just got a chance to talk to so many wonderful people that I met there. Um, it, uh, I would do anything to repeat uh, that and do it a little better. It doesn't seem to be in the cards for me at all. Um, it, it will be next year before th that trip is completely paid off and I um, have even any semblance of a chance to start saving for another trip like that um, so I don't see that as a real uh, likely scenario um, but you know I hope maybe um, you know I can get my um, expectations uh, uh, get my um, I'm hoping I can be satisfied with something uh, you know on a much 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 smaller scale vacation um, some type of a getaway uh, and I, I know there's several different options out there one of the really um, great benefits of my new health insurance is that uh, 
uh, my new oxygen supplier will provide me with free um, uh, portable oxygen concentrator that I would have to take on an airplane, uh, you know, on any trip, um, which I need one to fly. Uh, they provide it for free. My last company charged me two hundred fifty dollars, you know, and um, this one it would be free. So if I do go somewhere now, so I'm looking at things like there are some really inexpensive flights, you know, and I'm talking like hundred dollar round trip, you know, like Myrtle Beach, uh, Orlando, Florida, uh, and, and Vegas. Frankly, are the three, but there are a few others that are just a little bit outside of that range like Fort Lauderdale or, you know, Los Angeles or um, um, Gulf Shores, Alabama or um, anyway. Uh, so I'm looking at those because those are in like the $125 range round trip. I mean, depending on when you want to go. And then, and then, of course, the big problem is how much you're going to spend once you're there. You know, what are your needs? Are you going to stay right there? Are you going to need to rent a car? Um, you know, how much a night for the hotel, how much you're going to spend. See, I don't have anywhere near the kind of money to do any of that stuff um, at all. Um, unless it was going to be like maybe a three-day trip. So if I, I mean, I've seen some really, really low-priced options. Like, for instance, flying to Myrtle Beach, spending, uh, now Myrtle Beach is less than a two-hour flight. And, um, you know, so if you get there on a Friday afternoon and you fly back a Sunday afternoon, okay, you got, you know, two, basically two full days. Um, you can get a room down there for, you know, maybe $100 a night. Um, the flight, the round trip can be under $100. Um, so altogether, everything included, spending money, you know, you're talking about maybe a $500 trip or less. Um, I would say that's at the very top of my um, uh, hope list. Is, you know, um, I, I don't know that I said that quite the way I meant it. Um, I would say that would probably be the... Um, the maximum that I could even contemplate investing in a trip this summer. And more likely, I'll have to do something that doesn't involve a flight um, and doesn't involve that much money. And, uh, you know, truth is, um, you know, driving anywhere is... Um, you know, when you're talking $80 flights or $100 flights for round trip, then, you know, basically driving anywhere is almost as expensive these days as, uh, you know, at least where I want to go, which is, you know, to you know, to some shoreline. Again, I want to sit on the, uh, I just want to sit on a balcony you know, breathing in the sea air. That's that's really it. That's kind of what I want. Um, so I don't know. I don't know if it's in the cards for this year. Um, but we'll see. I know I'm doubling down on trying to pay off these, uh, pay down my credit cards, and uh, I'm going to continue to do that. So we'll see what, what happens. But uh, at any rate, that's it for now. Look for that. Um, look for that football video, if uh, if that's of any interest to you at all. I'm not sure how many Browns fans I have on this channel. Probably none. So, but anyway, it'll be good to get a video up on that other channel. And thanks for watching. Hang in there. It's gonna get better.